Internal Revenue Service to IRS Tax News. Don't be an easy mark. What every tax pro should know about identity theft. Easy mark. I, I'm a man, not a mark. Dang it. Easier otherwise. Dang government. I mean, at least they used to see me as a number. Now I'm not even a number. I'm just, I'm just a mark. And not even a, like a specific mark, like a check mark or something. I'm just some random mark, not a, not a number or a, a specific mark. I mean, it makes you feel kind of like some poor sap looking to get home with his hard earned money, walking through a blind alley with two gangs on each side looking to rob the poor mark. The bigger gang, known locally as simply the IRS, staring down the smaller identity theft gang saying, hey, that's my mark, dang it. However, we don't really care if you rob our mark as long as you report your robbing income to us and we get our quote fair share end quote that way. We do accept tax payments in cash now in order to accommodate organizations like yours. But first an attempt at a joke. President Biden these days acts like a chicken with its head cut off. Look at that boy running all around like a chicken with its head cut. Wait a minute. But like five years ago, not that he doesn't have a head, mind you. He just acts like a chicken that had its head cut off. But like the head was cut off a long time ago. So the chicken, it's not very active at this point. I'm a busy guy. I live in having been headless, you know, for an extended period of time. Very active lifestyle. I mean, for example, if you rolled out a chicken who had its head cut off five years ago out in front of a teleprompter. You chickened out, didn't you? It would look pretty much the same as when we roll President Biden out in front of a teleprompter. They aren't goth! They're douchey little vampire kids! Looks the same to me. The only difference being the chicken wouldn't have a head. What's the matter, loser? Did a horse bite your head off and now you're crying because you don't have a head? And I'm sure the headless chicken would get higher television ratings. I smell ratings. Due to the chicken's higher approval ratings. I mean, I don't, I don't know about you, but I know I'd sure rather take advice from the headless chicken. I'd rather take an order from Bill Clinton than hear that guy's snooty, high tone voice again, sir. IRS Tax Tip 2022-135, September 1st, 2022. It can be a challenge to stay ahead of identity thieves. These criminals are tech and tax savvy, and they like to target tax pros. It's a catchy phrase right there. So we've seen possibly an increase in the targeting of tax professionals by identity thieves, possibly in part due to changes in the laws. Some of those changes increasing things like refundable tax credits, for example, like the child tax credit, earned income tax credits, which may make it more valuable for identity thieves to try to use those stolen identities to file fraudulent tax returns, as well as other kind of programs that are designed in order to basically help during problematic times, but can also be a, a source for identity thieves to try to take advantage of. Therefore, the tax professionals have to be more on alert than even prior years these days. Of course, also we have changes in technology that are always happening as we go forward. So that too means that we gotta kinda try to be ahead of things. So they can either trick or hack their way into tax professionals' computer systems to access client data. So they're gonna try to get the data because remember, if you think of normal kind of identity theft tactics like phishing emails, we often see those and we're saying, hey, those are not that sophisticated looking. So you might not, you might have a, a false sense of security thinking that that would be the, the primary way that they're gonna target people. But that's usually kind of like a shotgun method when they're using those emails that are going out to everybody. And that might even be a filtering method to have very unsophisticated kind of emails so that the people that actually call them are more likely to go through the whole scam, which might include something like getting access to something through a through like a gift card or something like that, right? So so if they're gonna target their 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 uh, vision towards someone specific, then that would mean that they're gonna target tax pros possibly because now they're they might be able to get a lot more data with one shot, which means they're not gonna use the same simplistic tactics. They're, they might have multiple emails that they're gonna give and, and the phishing emails could be a lot more uh, specific and, and uh, therefore harder to detect. So even when tax pros think they have client data stored securely, lack of strong authentication can make this information vulnerable. 
Thieves use stolen data file to file fraudulent tax returns, which is more difficult for the IRS to detect because the fraudulent returns use real financial information. So other data thieves sell the basic tax preparer or taxpayer information on the web so other fraudsters can try filing fraudulent tax returns. Luckily, there are some easy things tax pros can do to protect their clients. You can create a security plan. Under federal law, paid tax return preparers must have a data security plan. This plan protects businesses and client information while also providing a blueprint for action in the event of a security breach. For many tax pros, knowing where to start when developing a, a written security plan presents challenges. There are resources available to assist like IRS Publication 4557, Safeguarding Taxpayer Data. There's a link to that here. You can encourage clients to apply for an identity protection pin. So this is something that used to be used uh, as a as a check after someone's identity had been stolen, meaning if someone did file a fraudulent tax return, you have to go through the process of saying, hey, that return was fraudulent. And then the IRS was going to try to stop them from filing another fraudulent return, which is difficult because they already have all your data, like your social security number. So they could give you another pin, which can act like a second identification number which will not save you from other things they might be able to do with your private data, but it could save you and protect you from what might be their primary target these days because many of the these kind of uh, plans that are, that are giving money out and whatnot uh, and increased credits are through the tax code. So another pin which identifies you differently would be something that can give you that second layer of security. And it's something that you can do pre pro preactively or beforehand before someone steals your identity and files a fraudulent tax return. See, IRS now offers IPPINs to all taxpayers who can verify their identities online on the phone with an IRS employee after filing a form 15227 or in person. The IPPIN is a six digit number that is known only to the taxpayer and the IRS. It helps prevent an identity theft from filing a fraudulent return in the taxpayer's name. Tax professionals cannot obtain an IPPIN for their clients. So you can't do it for them. They gotta do it themselves because the whole point is it's kind of like a second social security number, at least with regards to identification for the IRS. Uh, clients must verify their identities to the IRS. The easiest way is at the get an IPPIN tool. There's a link to that here. It's on irs.gov, irs.gov, obviously. So avoid spear phishing scams. So here we go. The dang people are trying to think we're a fish and, and skewer us. So we got to avoid that. One of the most successful tactics identity thieves use against tax professionals is the spear phishing scam. So watch out when you go swimming in the ocean. Thieves take time to craft personalized emails to entice tax professionals to open a link embedded in the email or open an attachment. Now, this is the most common kind of thing that we probably think of as some kind of phishing email tactic. And again, the phishing emails that we see are probably often very unsophisticated, but if they target you, they're gonna act like a client and they might then target you with multiple emails that can be much more uh, looking like a normal email from a client because now they're, they're trying to get one, if they get access to one uh, firm's stuff, then they get a lot more, it's a lot more uh, information they get for one hit, right? So they're gonna put, they, they might be willing to put a lot more time into it in some cases, unfortunately. So tax pros have been especially vulnerable to spear phishing scams from thieves posing as potential clients, of course. So we're in an environment where we're doing stuff all online now, we're trying to pick up clients and people act like a client and they can be quite convincing, especially in an environment where you're not interviewing them you know, personally. So thieves might carry an email conversation with their target for several days before sending the email con containing a link or attachment. The link or attachment may secretly download software into the tax pros computer that will give thieves remote access to the tax pro system. Those jerks. How could they do that to the best the people just trying to save the world, the uh, tax professionals by doing taxes? It's just horrible.
Know the telltale signs of identity theft. Many tax professionals who report data theft to the IRS also say that they uh, were, un were unaware of the signs that a theft had occurred. There are many signs that tax pros should watch out for. These include multiple clients uh, suddenly receiving IRS letters requesting confirmation that they filed a tax return deemed suspicious. So if the IRS is saying, hey, we got suspicious stuff and you're like, I didn't file, how, why would that be? Well, maybe someone's filing stuff to them, right? The tax professional may also see e-file acknowledgements for a far more tax returns than they filed. So if you get acknowledgements that for tax returns that you didn't file, well, that's a big sign. A computer hacking scenarios, computers, cursors may move. And this one always kind of makes me laugh because it seems like that would be quite obvious, right? If your cursor's moving uh, and uh, <laughs> and you're not moving it, like, and it's like, it's not like it, the table shook or anything like if it's filling out a tax return on its own then that's not that doesn't seem good uh and you should probably do something so help client protect themselves whether working from home or traveling with the continuation of work from home policies for many organizations taxpayers are doing more and more uh, electronically tax pros can help their clients protect themselves by sharing information on computer security so uh, those cyber smart tactics protect not only tax professionals, but their clients also. So if you're working remotely, especially working into an office, you might have a VPN or something like that because now you have more nodes that people can kind of get access to and then get into your major network and, and uh, steal stuff like they do. So in any case, whatever. More information at the link below at the Identity Theft Central. There's a link to that and a link to all the other stuff I said there was a link to and there'll be a link to this in the description.